Hello. Hi, this year OCP has been really successful, and we, Juniper, are really thrilled to be part of this. I am Kumutini Ratnasinghe, Senior Product Line Manager at Juniper Networks. Hi, I'm Lester Bird. I'm an engineer at Juniper Networks, leading the uh, multi-PFE sonic effort. So you might have heard about uh, our operating system, network operating system, Juno S. And um, so we have, what we have been doing is we have been uh, innovating in the network operating system space, and that has enabled us to support Sonic so easily. So what I'm going to do is today's talk, the goal of the today's talk is going to be how we have disaggregated our network operating system and how that has enabled us to support Sonic. So um, we have been um, uh, innovating our network operating system and first we have done is we have disaggregated our software stack and we have made it open. So let's see how we have uh, disaggregated the software stack. So first thing that comes to our mind when we talk about uh, disaggregation is the white box solution, right? Separate the software from hardware and what this allows uh, the, our customers to do is that uh, they can actually go with best of breed uh, software or best of breed com components and also it allows our customers to upgrade the hardware while leveraging the software. So this is a typical offering in the industry and um, it is also perceived as a cost effective solution. At Juniper, we have even gone ahead, one step ahead, and disaggregate the software stack itself. I have um, categorized them into three components, uh, three main buckets. Disaggregation at the management level, disaggregation at the control plane level, and disaggregation at the forwarding level. So if you look at the disaggregation at the management level, we support open config on our boxes. So let's say our customers, um, they buy Juniper uh, switches, and if they have other vendor switches also, if they speak open config, if all the vendors speak open config, that is a programmable infrastructure language that uh, requires declarative modeling, um, for, for our customers, it becomes, uh, it becomes a vendor agnostic at the management level. Right? That's the disaggregation at the management level. And then if you look at the disaggregation at the control plane level, we delegate control functions to Sonic and we take care of the forwarding and routing, which is what we are great at. So we take care of the routing part. And then the last one is uh, disaggregation at the forwarding level. If you have a SDN controller that speaks P4 and P4 runtime, uh, that can for, uh, program the forwarding plane um, so that uh, the customers don't need to buy the control plane functions or the management functions from Juniper. Just we, when we say we are disaggregated at the level of forwarding, we, uh, we sell our forwarding plane to some of our customers just that without the control plane or management plane. And then of course, uh, last one is, uh, Shifting the intelligence of the box. Uh, we have uh, control controllers, or we have owners and ODL, and they program the switches and um, routers. Right? So when we say this, uh, Juniper is disaggregating, we have disaggregated our software stack at multiple levels. Uh, you can um, we uh, offer solution either one component or multiple components in uh, with different uh, combination so uh, in uh, for, for different solutions okay. we have not only disaggregated we have also gone ahead and it is also open so uh, now uh, 
Juno, as if you know about it, we used to run, run it on FreeBSD, and now the modernized version of it, it can run on Linux. When you run your operating system on Linux, it comes with a lot of benefits. It's, uh, you know, um, there is a vast uh, developer community support and the standardized APIs, uh, third-party apps you can run, you know, telemetry agents, uh, collect the, all these agents you can run, and open source tools are available. Uh, so we have already opened our software to run on Linux. Disaggregation applications, I have already talked about the white box. What we, the second application is what we have done is we have taken our routing stack out of Juno S and packaged it as a container. And it's a containerized RPD. We have multiple demos running in our booth, A2. If you are interested, stop by. And also my colleague uh, Manish and Vinay are going to do presentation right after this session. So stick around if you are interested. And then the third one is um, we have uh, separated the control plane and the data plane, put them in VMs, uh, one VM for control plane and one VM for the data plane, and they run on a Linux OS. Uh, VMX, VSRX are such uh, offerings. Sonic on a single PFE system, because we have disaggregated and it is open. It took us only less than two months to support Sonic on a single PFE system, single ASIC. That's how fast uh, we enable Sonic on our single PFE systems. And then multi-PFE and multi-PFE modular chassis, we have written a HAL layer to support that. So that Sonic is today, it's a single um, layer. So to support the multiple ASICs, we have a HAL layer in between. And Lester will talk more about that. And let's look at the architecture diagram of a single PFE system. Um, this is the way we, um, we support Sonic in a single PFE system. All the blue boxes that you see are coming from Sonic. Redis container, FPM sync D, orchestration agent, SI, all that is coming from Sonic. And we provide CRPD. And we have also done uh, development work on the platform drivers. So if you look at the packet, it comes to ASIC. And it comes to ASIC, and it goes up the TCP stack, go to CRPD, and push the route using the netlink and the other interface is, it is pushing the FIB on to the Redis and Sai pushes it down to the FIB. And I'll pass the... On the, on the multi-PFE case, we replaced the uh, ASIC SDK with a Juniper HAL container. That Juniper HAL container allows us to not only program the, all the line cards, it uh, abstracts the ASIC detail, so it's a short, if we deploy a new um, modular system, it, Sonic infrastructure virtually doesn't change and we can deploy very quickly. Um, with the remaining time, we're gonna show a video of what we did on the PTX 10003, which is one of uh, Juniper's multi-PFE uh, platforms. Uh, it's running over the Juniper ZX chip, so this is side to a custom Juniper ASIC. Um, if we have time for questions, we'll take some. If not, we'd love to talk to you afterwards. Our booth is A2. So here's the video, thanks. Welcome to Juniper's multi-PFE Sonic demonstration. Today, we'll be using the PTX 10003. The PDX 10003 has two variations. The first has four FPCs and 80 ports. The second has two FPCs and 40 ports. This is the version that we're using for the demo. 
So let's get started. We are logged into the PTX 10003. If we execute show version, we see that we are based on the November 2018 Sonic release. Show platform indicates that we are using a custom Juniper ASIC, the ZX chip. When we look at the environment, we can see various hardware devices. In particular, note that Sonic sees FPC0 and FPC1. The running configuration shows us the mappings between Sonic network interface names and JunoS WAN ports. For clarity, I've highlighted these mappings for easy viewing. Finally, we can see that Ethernet 1 and Ethernet 2 have both been configured with IP addresses. We now consider the PTX 1003 with Sonic and CRPD, Juniper's routing protocol suite. We will be adding 1 million routes. To test Sonic, we will be using Ixia to emulate two BGP peers. Each peer advertises 500,000 prefixes. Ixia also generates traffic so that we can verify data plane switching. Note that we use two ports, Ethernet 1 on FPC0 and Ethernet 2 on FPC1. Note also the JunoS aliases. We start in the CRPD command shell. Show BGP neighbors gives us information about current BGP sessions. We see that the connection to the first BGP peer is established. This peer has sent us 500,000 prefixes on Ethernet 1. The second BGP neighbor is also up. It too has sent us 500,000 prefixes, except this time on Ethernet 2. By looking at the BGP summary, we see that a million routes have been installed on the system. Now we connect to the PFE. Notice that the BGP prefixes have been installed into the FIB. The FIB now has 1 million entries. We can display the FIB by executing show route proto IP. Here are some of the entries. Finally, we verified that the PTX 10003 is switching traffic across FPCs between Ethernet 1 and Ethernet 2. Here we see interface statistics increase from 196 million to 198 million. We can also verify packet switching from the PFE. Here we look at both JunoS ports and we see the packet counts rising as expected. Juniper Sonic also allows open source Quagga if that is your preference. Here we are in the VTY shell. There are two established BGP sessions. We see the prefixes as expected in the FIB. and network interface statistics for Ethernet 1 and Ethernet 2 are increasing. Juniper Sonic offers several features. PSI for custom Juniper A6 like the ZX chip, multi-PFE, CRPD routing protocols, or if you like, Quagga routing protocols. And finally, large-scale FIB. We demonstrated 1 million FIB entries in this video, but in our lab, we have gone up to 2 million FIB entries. Please come by and visit with us. We love to answer your questions. Thank you very much. So that is our uh, Juniper Multi-PFE demo. Uh, so, yeah. We will in time. Um, we currently ha don't right now. This was a proof of concept, but as we move forward, we have plans to look into that and explore that possibility. So um, I have a question. Uh, with all your efforts on, on Johnny Personic, what are you putting in the open source community? So there's certain things we have to give back. We plan to extend back to Sonic. Um, so 
one of the things that we have to do, we have modular chassis. Modular chassis, we have hop swappable line cards. That means you can pull them out, put them in, and so you're gonna have to have dynamic port management. There's other things that we're looking at too that we hope to bring out. But uh, so this is one of those things that, uh, um, but the real thing that we're doing is we're disaggregating, we're allowing the mixture, you could pick your own Linux, you can use any, you could stay up with the current sonic sources and you can integrate Docker containers. This is something that Juniper traditionally hasn't done in past in their platforms and you'll have this mixture to do it. So if I want to run a CRPD, what do I need to do today? Well, CRPD is, a, you, so it's a licensed product, right? Because it's Juniper routing protocols. But Vinay can tell you more about the exact thing to do, but you would essentially at, at the simplest level be replace Quagga with the CRPD and run those routing protocols and activate any of the features. Um, I don't want to steal sure. Vinay's thunder because he's going to give a presentation on that. So, I think he's going to talk about that right now. Do you have kids? No okay. ones? Do you want to move to the next one? Oh, okay, thanks. Okay, so I will give you to Vinay.